You're listening to Toronto's best metal radio, The Red Switch. Welcome to yet another fantastic week of the Red Switch. Uh, it's uh, 12, 11 a.m. right now, and uh, we are covering a lot of great music tonight. Also, not to mention the highlight of the night, uh, we are talking with uh, Daraxis guitarist Rob, who's going to be joining us live on air tonight. Rob, how you doing? Good, good. How you doing? Well, I'm not too bad. And yourself? Good, thanks. That's great. And uh, Rob, where are exactly you calling in from tonight? From Montreal. Montreal. Good old Montreal. Well, I should have said bonjour. Uh, for those who are not completely uh, familiar with uh, Naraxis, describe in a nutshell what makes Naraxis Naraxis. Uh, musically uh, speaking, we play um, a very extreme, aggressive style of, uh, of extreme metal. Some can say it's death metal, some can say it's melodic death metal. Um, but we like to uh, combine the, our influences and uh, meld it into... Uh, a certain style that that we've we've developed over the last few years, and uh, lyrically speaking, um, we we delve into a lot of uh, psychological uh, issues um, stemming from the, the name Naraxis, which is uh, a, a brainstem, a cell in the brainstem. So it it, it, it gears towards those type of uh, lyrical subjects a lot. That's it in a nutshell. Yeah, man. With the despised icon out of the picture, are you guys ready to usurp them from international acclaim? <laughs> Both being from Montreal, or I guess uh, Quebec in general? Uh, well, you know, we have a different... I, I find we have a different um, fan base. Um, they definitely uh, conquered a lot of uh, ground in the last few years with a lot of younger uh, fans and that, that more uh, core style of, uh, of music, but... Um, uh, we're definitely proud that they got as far as they did, and um, you know it's, it's sad that they, they they hung it up. But uh, you know we're not in competition or anything like that. We're, mm-hmm. we're all we're all good friends. So um, you know if if, uh, if they helped uh, open doors for us, then that's great. Yeah, y- your band's uh, lineup has changed many times since Naraxis uh, jettisoned into existence. Oh, do you think the integrity integrity of the original sound has been maintained? And uh, uh, if not, why so? Uh, well, I think that um, Naraxis is a, t- a type of band that is is continuously uh, evolving. Uh, we obviously uh, we have a a core sound that you know will always uh, will always stick with, but we're always evolving and trying new things. Um, as if you're referring to if we're exactly the same as we were when uh, the first album came out, no, there, there is a there is a big difference. But I, I really think that Naraxis' sound and style. Uh, developed and became what it what it is, uh, starting with our second uh, release, Passage into Forlorn. And um, I've been with the band for about 15 years now, so uh, it's been cool working with a lot of musicians, and uh, they've helped develop our sound. And um, we're, we're we're happy. We're actually that we're really happy with the lineup we have right now. Everything is working great, so mm-hmm. uh, it's just it's just positive. That's all I can really say about the lineup currently. Yeah. So regardless of lineup changes, your music would have evolved uh, over time, regardless, basically. I think so. I, 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 you know, there are bands that just always stick to what they do and and you know don't deviate from that. And there's some really good ones, but <clears throat> and we're not that in that excuse me in that vein of just sticking to what we do. You know, like a, a, a Slayer or a I don't know who, but that, that's a classic example. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're always evolving. Uh, we, we get new influences. You know, we we write music um, without sounding like we're e- emo. We we write music. Uh, emotionally you know it's it's not mechanically even though some uh, some have said that it sounds very mechanical but the music actually stems from mm. personal and emotional uh, uh, situations that we, we live through you know so. yeah uh, understandable now judging by the name of the band Naraxis and you you defined it earlier uh, how cerebral does the group's content get uh, and also lyrical wise uh, well, me not being a, the lyric writer in the band or vocalist, Alex uh, is the one that's taking care of that. Uh, he, I can't speak um, 100% for him, but 
Uh, I know that the lyrics on our, our new album, Asylum, were very, were very personal uh, related to him and uh, did have to do a lot with psychological uh, and emotional issues. Um, maybe not per se going as cerebral uh, like we are mathematicians or anything like that or scientists or whatever, but uh, very, very to do with psychological and emotional uh, issues that he was going through in the last couple of years. And along with myself writing the music, you know, I, I had a lot of uh, emotional uh, emotions come through when this, with this latest album. So uh, you could say that it's... it's uh, brain and heart related <laughs> mm -hmm. those two go together very well <laughs> you guys have found uh now this is me personally you have a lot in common with augury content wise as well as concepts uh, in terms of the albums spiritual progression the cosmos kind of, kind of space that sort of thing in addition to the ancients in lieu of the the name of the new album uh, is there any one subject that naraxis won't cover uh, well, you know, we're not interested in, in, uh, in any form of uh, preaching or, or denouncing anything, so we're never going to be uh, writing anything to do with religion, whether uh, <clears throat> for or against it, so we'll never, we'll never touch upon that subject. There's other bands that have done, uh, you know, a great job at that, and it, I think it's just been overused to the, to the max on that, so we'll never touch that, and we'll never, we'll never go into... Uh, anything to do uh, with, uh, uh, you know, gore or, or sexual related type of issues either. We stick, stay away from those type of things. Is there any one reason why? Besides, you know, beating a dead horse? Uh, it's just not uh, something that I guess it characterizes uh, uh, the, the, the band members. Uh, even though we do have a lot of, um, you know, respect and we like a lot of those bands that sing about that. Uh, that's not who we are really as, as people, so um, we just stick, you know, we'll stick to what we're, we're interested in, in uh, writing about and uh, keep evolving from that. But we won't, if, you, if there's a word, digress and, and, and get more primitive, we won't do that. Oh, <laughs> good answer. <laughs> uh, I've been over this many times with other Quebec bands, uh, specifically Montreal. Toronto doesn't even come close to the quantity and quality of Montreal groups. Is there something going on in Montreal that the rest of Canada does not know about? Can you shed some new light on this? What is what is going on up there in Montreal? Uh, well, I, I don't I don't want to... Uh, I'm not the type to also uh, sound holier than now and say Montreal is better than another city. Um, you know, Toronto does have a lot of quality bands. Um, whether they have less in, in terms of quantity than us, that might be. I don't know. It's funny, though, that there's a larger population, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, and metal does seem to be strong in Toronto, so uh, I couldn't explain if there's less bands doing that. But uh, quality-wise, well, that's really, I guess, up to the listener to decide uh, or judge that. Um, like I said, I, I don't want to... Say, I don't want to say we're better than any other city, but we, we definitely do have our, our scene happening here, and uh, it's definitely healthy. Uh, it's gone through like some lows, and then it's gotten really strong, and then kind of dipped down again. And so uh, it's, it's always evolving. Mm -hmm. You you guys are notorious for touring a lot. You've uh, you've just come off a tour not too long ago, uh, as I believe it. Now you guys are touring at the moment, or are you going on to one? Uh, we just wrapped up um, a uh, U.S. tour that we did with Deicide and Belphegor, Blackguard and Gigan, and uh, we're actually going to be taking off uh, this Sunday uh, for the uh, Sepultura North American tour, so um, with Belphegor and Hate, Keeper Callison, and Bond by Blood, so nice. it's going to be uh, it's gonna be actually the biggest one we've done, I think it's a 43-day tour, seven-week tour, so going to be pretty massive. Wow, that's a big tour. Yeah. All them back-to-back, -back, all those days, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, this new album, A Cylon, that just uh, came out, released from Prosthetic Records. Really cool stuff. I'm going to be playing Sinister from that album. Uh, any insights towards this track before we go ahead and play it? Um, musically, I know that uh, when I was writing that, it was kind of an experimental um, type of song. I wasn't sure how it was going <clears> to... <throat> Um, evolve, uh, but it, it, you know, it stemmed from uh, some, some darker feelings that I was uh, going through, and uh, I think it comes through in the music. It is a dark, uh, very dark under undertone to that song, and uh, it's very vicious. 
So uh, very sinister. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. This is uh, this is sinister from Naraxis, the new album, a Cylon. You could, uh, I believe, you can pick it up in stores now, right? Yeah, it's available. Yeah, it's, it's available in stores. Go pick it up. It's it's great. Uh, some would say some of the finest work to come from you guys. I say it's it's up there with the other albums, but still great nonetheless. Rob, I want to thank you again for uh, talking to us tonight. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hey, no worries, and uh, good luck on the upcoming tour. Cool, thank you. Hey, no worries. Take it easy. All right. This is uh, Sinister from Naraxis right here on the Red Switch. Make a go, 